dear Mark, dear Susan, dear friends, colleagues, partners, distinguished, distinguished, distinguished participants of forum, ladies and gentlemen. U.S. President John F. Kennedy once said, we stand for freedom. That is our conviction to, for ourselves. That is our only commitment to others. For more than a year already, the United States of America and our Western allies have provided extraordinary support to Ukraine in its struggle for our independence, our freedom, and our lives. The bravery Ukrainian has shocked the entire world as has the brutality of the Russians. Today, Russia is not only trying to occupy part of Ukrainian territories, they are trying to destroy our country, to wipe it out. They speak about it pub publicly without hiding. But this war is not only about Ukraine. This war is a fight for democracy and for values. This war is an attempt by the Russian leadership to destroy all existing principles of the security architecture and the international world order. If the Ukrainian army had not stopped the Russian near Kyiv, Chernihiv, Mykolaiv, Kharkiv, Bakhmut, and Avdiivka, I firmly believe that Russia would have tried to attack the Baltic countries and Poland. Today, Russia is not just attacking a sovereign European country. Russia is trying to provoke energy, food, and migration crises in Europe and in Western world. It engaged in cyber attacks, conduct disinformation campaign, and interferes in elections. The civilized world needs to aware of the scale of the threat posed by modern Russia and its imperial ambitions. Today, it is Ukraine that is paying an extremely high price for holding back these Russian ambitions. Today, we are the shield of Europe. Thousands of Ukrainians have died. A large number of our cities are completely destroyed. Our land is contaminated by mines and shells. Our economy has declined by a third. One in six Ukrainians was forced to become a refugee. Millions of people have lost their homes. It's hard for us, but we have persevered. We are winning. We are driving the enemy out of internationally recognized territories. We are starting a great reconstruction and recovery program. We are sure that victory will, will be ours. And this victory will bring peace and stability to Europe and the world. We feel that we are not alone in our struggle. The United States and our international partners have provided unprecedented levels of military, financial, humanitarian support for the Ukrainian people. The United States and President Biden's administration have played a key role in building a strong pro-Ukrainian coalition. Partly because of this international support, our financial, economic, banking, and energy system have survived. Russian terror against Ukraine's energy system has failed. Ukrainian institutions have shown what anti-fragility truly is. In addition, Ukraine has launched a number of reforms over the past year and has developed a plan for the fundamental transformation of our country. In 2022, despite the war, we became a candidate for the EU membership and made significant achievements in five areas of integration into European single market. The Ukrainian energy system became part of the, Ukra of the European system. We can import and export electricity to the EU, and we implement the best European regulations in the energy sector. Ukrainian customs integrating with European customs, Ukraine and EU have liberalized the 
freight transportation by cancelling all permits, the EU has abolished all tariffs, duties and quotas on Ukrainian products. We are actively integrating with EU digital sector. Ukraine has started to review its own legislation for compliance with European. We have set an ambitious goal to fully meet the criteria for EU membership in two years. In March this year, the main European anti-corruption institution, Greco, published a report recognizing that we have implemented more anti-corruption reforms in the past year than in previous years. We are fully transparent and provide absolutely all information about the support we received. All reports are available for our partners to see. So actually, Greco said that Ukraine have made remarkable progress in anti-corruption reforms during the last one year. So Ukrainian society and government have zero tolerance for corruption. We have established all needed anti-corruption infrastructure, all needed anti-corruption infrastructure, anti-corruption uh, prosecutor, anti-corruption court, uh, anti-corruption agency and agency for prevention of corruption. Every institution is ongoing work. Uh, we implement legislation, we adopt uh, anti-corruption strategy as a law of Ukraine. We adopt anti-corruption program as an order of uh, cabinet of ministers. So all the reforms and all needed is ongoing. Uh, our government, our president, our society have zero, zero tolerance uh, for corruption. And uh, as, as uh, S Secretary uh, Raimondo today noted that uh, we will fight everyone, every one person who will be only suspected in corruption. So it means that uh, corruption in Ukraine is in, in the past and we will move into ahead to the democratic, civilized values of European Union and civilized world. We are reducing the role of the state in the economy by privatizing inefficient state enterprises. We are carrying out large-scale deregulation on the economy and abolishing hundreds of permits and licenses so that business in Ukraine can breathe freely during this war and after this war. For companies that want to work and invest in U that want to work and invest in Ukraine, we have introduced particularly attractive conditions in the form of tax and regulatory regulatory benefits. For any large company wishing to invest in our economy, we offer a specially appointed government advisor who will help with absolutely all operational issues for your companies who will invest in Ukraine. I believe it. Given the extent of the destruction and the scale of the uh, reconstruction, we can already say that confidence that those who invest in Ukraine now will have excellent prospects and good profits. Together with our partners, we are working on the program of military risk insurance for international companies that will invest in Ukraine. Ukraine's recovery plan has a special place in our discussions with international partners today. We are talking about a new Marshall Plan that will completely transform our economy and our country according to the principles big, uh, built back better. So what future awaits Ukraine? We are determined not only to win this war, but also be fully integrated into global value chains and create opportunities for Ukrainian and foreign companies to benefit from doing business and with, Ukra and with Ukraine. We want to and we will rebuild better according to this principle which I named. Foreign private investments, especially from the United States, will lay the foundation for such a transformation. The recovery of Ukraine will be a testimony to the power of democracy, international cooperation, the rule of law, inclusion and social justice. During the recovery, Ukraine will focus on supporting the following sectors of our economy, energy complex, military industrial complex, agricultural sector, 
informational technologies, the construction of new infrastructure and housing, basic and critical materials sector. Investment in these sectors will be the most promising and I invite you to invest into that and other sectors in Ukraine. Reconstruction and recovery needs are estimated by World Bank at $411 billion by February 2023. The Ukrainian government has already identified five priorities. Uh, and first of all, this is reconstruction and modernization of our energy system, housing construction, humanitarian demining, restoration of our critical and social infrastructure, economic incentives for small and medium businesses. To implement projects in these five areas, we will need 14 billion already this year. We hope that our international partners, especially in the US, will help us raise the necessary funds. We have almost half of these funds. We begin restoration for immediate recovery, uh, critical infrastructure, for humanitarian demining, and we invite U.S. companies to take part in this project. Regarding the main sources of funding for the reconstruction plan, we identify four of them. Uh, seized Russian assets in Ukraine and in the West, funds from international partners, including international financial organizations, funds directly from Ukraine state budget, and funds from donors and private sectors. Uh, so frozen Russian assets should be number one source for recovery today and for future recovery plans. At the same time, it seems very important to US that to us uh, that we confiscated Russian state funds become the main source of reconstruction, not the resources of Ukrainian, American or European taxpayers. Uh, but the resources of Russia, which is responsible for this war and for these damages and losses which Russia brings to Ukraine and countries around to Ukraine, it's, I, I mean economical uh, losses for many European countries and many countries in the world. We propose to our partners to create a special compensation mechanism and to adopt the relevant national legislation allowing for all the seizure of frozen private and state Russian assets, the United States has already adopted relevant legislative decisions on the seizure of Russian private assets. Uh, we look forward to U.S. leadership on the issue of confiscation of Russian state assets. Dear friends, Ukraine wants peace and justice more than anyone else, and we dream that this war will end as soon as possible. We want peace like no one else in this world. But at the same time, we understand like no one else in the world that lasting peace in Europe is only possible after the implementation of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky peace formula. On strength lies in our unity, in our common values, and our readiness to fight for them Thank you for your support. Thank you for attention today. We are united in defense today and we will be recovery. We will be united in our recovery tomorrow our, after, after our mutual victory. God bless America and glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. Thank you very much. Thank you.